He was inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame in 2009. He has the most stolen bases of anyone and the record will never be broken. He also has the most runs scored. At one point he had the most walks of all time. He has the most leadoff home runs. He's been to 10 All-Star games. 3,000 hits. He's Ricky Henderson, one of the greatest players to ever play, one of my favorites to ever watch, and one of my favorites to collect. Mostly known for his many stints with the Oakland A's. He played for a bunch of teams and we'll get into that as we go through my PC of Ricky. His rookie card is 1980 Tops, and I'm looking to get another one to add to this collection. 1981 Tops, though, is a great way to start. Great looking shot of a young Ricky. There's 81 Don Russ and Fleer next to that up top. Fleer also commemorates uh, most stolen bases in the league with another card of his. And then in 82, Fleer gave him a base card as well as most hits and runs scored in 1981. At the bottom, his 82 Donruss, Donruss Diamond Kings, and 82 Tops. In 1983, Tops gave Ricky three cards in the base set. His regular issue card, record breaker, mentioning most steals in one season, and all-star card. Fleer gave Ricky three cards in their set as well in 1983. His base card, and a couple superstar specials, one called Speed and... And, and, oh, you had to get the card prior to that, which showed Reggie Jackson, who was power. So you put them together, speed and power. Fleer had another combination from this set as well, with Bud Black and Vita Blue that they called Black and Blue. Something to set it apart from Tops and Don Russ, I guess. And then Superstar Special of the Silver Shoe, another record-breaking, record-setting, stolen base year for Ricky. At the bottom is his 83 Tops Send-In Glossy, his 83 Donruss, and 84 Fleer. Up top we have his 84 Donruss, 84 Tops Ralston Purina, which were car, a 33 card set from Purina Serials, randomly inserted, not to be confused with similar looking cards that were called Serial Series up top. A little bit different, different sets. And next to that, 1984 Tops Send In Glossy. In the middle, 1984 Tops Highlight and Base Card, 1985 Fleer, and at the bottom, 1985 Tops, Tops All Star, and All Time Record Holders, which was a Tops series in conjunction with Woolworth stores, which were a box set. Here's Ricky looking to steal another base on his 85 Donruss card. And then everyone in the New York area got excited when we heard that he was coming to the Yanks and he got put on an 85 Tops Traded. And then it was all Ricky in 86. 86 Donruss in the middle of his Tops and All-Star and his Glossy All-Star. Here's a fun little collector piece on the bottom. 1986 7 Eleven Slurpee Discs. They were kind of like sports flicks. You'd flip them different ways and get different images. There were 16 different players but there were four different regions and you could tell which region based on the color of the border this one is yellow so it came from the east and the other ones were blue for the central purple for the southeast and an orange border for the west coast same players just different colors and then 86 Fleer and Fleer Mini 1987 Fleer and 87 Fleer Mini at top next to was 87 Donruss in the middle is 87 Tops, Tops Turn Back the Clock, and Tops All-Star Sticker. You can tell by the silver border that those were the All-Stars. And at the bottom is 87 Send in Glossy, 88 Superstar Sticker Back, and 88 Tops All-Star Sticker. More Yankees from the late 80s, 88 Donruss, 88 Tops Send in Glossy, 88 Fleer. In the middle is his 88 Tops, Tops League Leader, otherwise known as the Minis and 88 Donruss pop-ups, which were perforated, and you can actually pop the image up and create a little 3D stand-up of one of 20 different players, and they were packaged one per Donruss All-Star pack. And on the bottom, 88 score, 89 score, and 89 score highlight. Here we have his 89 tops, 89 tops rack pack glossy, and 89 fleer. And then 89 top send in glossy and 89 Donruss and upper deck. 
Unfortunately, the honeymoon didn't last as long as we wanted, and Ricky went back to Oakland. And he is covered on all the traded and update sets at the end of the year. 89 tops traded, 89 FLIR update, 89 score update. A Bowman card that's actually standard size. 1990 Bowman up top, next to his 90 upper deck and 90 FLIR. In the middle we have his 90 tops, tops record breaker and Donruss. And then baseball card magazine insert, another 1969 lookalike. 1990 Topps Superstars, which the company released in conjunction with Kmart as a box set, and 1990 score. In 1990, Ricky was named the American League Most Valuable Player, and card companies took advantage of printing lots of different cards of him the next couple of years. First is his MVP card, his MVP award winner card, and then his regular base. 91 Donruss Series 1 All-Star card is in the middle, next to his horizontal score and score MVP. This card looks very similar to his 91 Upper Deck Base, and I love the multi-exposure shot there, but this has a Toronto 91 All-Star Game logo, and it is from the Upper Deck's Final Edition, which had players from the All-Star Game, in a different pose with the same template. And then 91 Upper Deck sensing that Ricky was going to break the all-time stolen base record, had him and Lou Brock share a card and a base together with 939 Brock's career mark, and a classy touch having Ricky with a green bow tie and Brock with a red. If you haven't seen my Nolan Ryan PC video yet, I encourage you to go and watch it when you're done with this one, of course. But in that, you will see that this card from 91, which shows the dual historical day of May 1st, 1991, is in that collection as well. Ricky and Nolan shared record-setting, record-breaking uh, moments that day, and I have one for Nolan and one for Ricky. Might as well. 91 FLIR and 91 FLIR Provisions, with Ricky slinging a pair of cleats over his shoulder, his weapon of choice. In the middle, a horizontal photo from 91 Tops, 92 FLIR, and there's an empty space here that I want to put in a 1992 Donruss Elite card, numbered out of 10,000. I'm looking for, hoping to find. And then his 92 Donruss base at the bottom, regular card, highlights card, and all-star card. So Ricky won an MVP and broke the all-time stolen brace record. What else could card companies capitalize on? How about stealing your 1,000th base? which at the time, and still now, people think will never happen again. So 92 Upper Deck gave us another great painting and headline, Grand Theft, and in another painting with him running and stealing a base on the checklist card, and then Diamond Skills Best Base Runner with the momentous day of May 1st on that card. In the middle row, we have 92 Topps Record Breaker, 92 tops base and 92 upper deck. Uh, Ricky stealing another base. He could steal, but he could also hit for power and average as he's showing off in his 92 score dream team card in black and white. His 92 score highlight of all time leader and 93 tops at the bottom. 1993 Fleer is next to his 93 upper deck gallery heroes with a small hologram on the left. And then 1994 tops showing him now as a member of the Blue Jays would soon go on to be world champions again. 1994 score is in the middle row next to his 95 collector's choice best of the 90s and 95 tops. And he's back with Oakland just like that. 96 tops, 97 tops, now with San Diego and 99 Fleer tradition. And it made sense for card companies to have lots of horizontal pictures of him either fielding or running or sliding into one of the four bases. 2000 tops with the Mets, 2000 top centuries best of runs scored and stolen bases, 2001 upper deck vintage showing his helping the Mariners in the playoffs, and then 2001 tops golden moments, and this says limited edition, I don't know, if it's not numbered, I don't know if there was much of a difference between the stamped limited edition cards and the other ones that were, that were released, I'll have to look into that as well. 2001 tops base, that's what this is. 2001 Upper Deck Year of the Record, with most runs scored in a career. And 2001 World Series Heroes from Upper Deck, and 2003 Tops. 
2010 tops her mom threw out. She didn't throw mine out. Not the 81 original and not this reprint. Uh, franchise history of the A's and legendary lineage with Carl Crawford. In the middle of 2012, Allen and Ginter, and I believe it's 2013, Gypsy Queen. And at the bottom, a couple of oddball items. Newark Bears pocket schedule from 2004. The Bears Independent League, uh, which has a, a very long history going back to the Negro Leagues uh, in baseball. Unfortunately, the Bears haven't played since 2014. And the last stadium they were at in Newark is being uh, demolished right now to make way for a new mall. So maybe the franchise will re-emerge somewhere. Uh, this is just a pocket schedule with Ricky was a, a member of the team for one season. And then the 1993 upper deck of Wally Joyner of the Royals. Playing first base shows Ricky scooping in, trying to avoid being picked off. And I looked it up on uh, our friends at BaseballReference.com, and that game actually was from August 8th, 1992, in which Ricky walked three times in five plate appearances and did steal a base. I'm not sure if it was that from that inning or not. It was the only day game. It was the only day game in Oakland against Kansas City in which Ricky either played or got on base. So it's fun to look up those little things. So that's some of Ricky's stuff. And Ricky has more, and Ricky would like if I went and collected more of his stuff, and I'd like it too. Hopefully I can pick up that Donruss Elite sometime soon and another rookie card, and we'll be on our way, off and running like Ricky does. So thank you so much for watching. Tune in for more stuff. I've got lots more videos on the way of other PC, other vintage sets, and we'll be talking to you soon.